Let's learn in this video about Azure Container Apps, the new service for running containers in Azure. Within the Azure portal, if I select the Containers section, I can see the services that I can use in order to run containers. These services have one common objective, is that they can run containers in production. But they are different. They are different by design. On the left side, we'll find the services that will give you more infrastructure control. You will manage that infrastructure yourself, like using the Azure Red Hat OpenShift or the Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS clusters. On the right side, we'll find the services that will enable you to get more out of the developer productivity, like using the Azure App Service with the web app for containers, and using Azure Container Instance, ACI, or using Function App that can also run containers in a serverless infrastructure. Container Apps positioning will be somewhere between the managed Kubernetes clusters and the app service services. The objective here is to have a managed environment or a managed service and at the same time get the value of the developer productivity. So Azure Container Apps, at the end, that's a fully managed serverless abstraction running on a Kubernetes infrastructure and its purpose is to manage and scale event-driven microservices with a consumption-based pricing model. Let's see the, uh, let's say, the architecture of a container app. So it's built on top of AKS, the Azure Kubernetes Service, and it will use some open source components like the Envoy to manage the proxy or to manage the networking within the cluster, between the services, and it will use also KEDA if for event-driven auto-scaling to be able to scale out the containers within the container apps. It will also use the Dapper platform for managing the microservices. So with container apps, it's like you have a fully managed AKS cluster with the platforms that are installed on top of that AKS and then you will be able to deploy your containers and benefit from all of these infrastructures or platforms. What you can do now with container apps? What are the typical applications to deploy into a container apps? First scenario, we will have the microservices. Because container apps use Dapper, it will be able to handle the microservices architecture for communication between the microservices and then the scaling will be done by using KEDA to scale out from zero to n number of replica and vice versa. Second type of applications is the event-driven processing. If we want to trigger an event that will trigger an application to run that will process a number of messages within a queue, for example, then we can enable that with container apps and we can use, again, KEDA to look for the number of messages within a queue and then scale out based on that number of messages. We can use container apps to expose our services publicly on a public API endpoint and we can benefit from features like HTTP traffic split between different versions to say, for example, 80% to the revision or the version number one and 20% for version number two in order to be able to do blue-green testing. In this case, we can scale based on HTTP requests for each application. Another type of applications that could be run within container apps is the background processing. For scenarios where we want to run continuously running background processes that will, for example, transform data in a database, we can do that within container apps and we can scale, in this case, based on the metrics of CPU and memory. Let's now see the anatomy of container apps. When we create a container app environment, actually we would have the first thing that will be created is the environment itself. As we said, container apps will, is built on top of AKS. So first of all, we would have that AKS created or the AKS cluster created with the creation of container apps. And of course, we'll not see that AKS cluster, we'll not be able to manage it but we'll see another resource that is called container app environment. And here each environment have its own AKS cluster behind the scenes. Now within that 
container apps environment will go to deploy our containers. They will be deployed because here we have an AKS cluster. They will be deployed within a pod that will live within a revision object. And within a pod, we can deploy one or multiple containers. And they, we could also deploy sidecar containers or init containers also. It's worth mentioning here that the only type of workload supported within container apps are the Linux containers. It does not support yet Windows containers. Now, after deploying our containers, maybe we want to expose these containers through because we are using Kubernetes again, then that will be through an ingress resource. So we could use either an internal or external ingress, internal ingress for internal applications and external ingress for a public API endpoint. And because we might have multiple applications connecting with each other, then we can use the TLS encryption between these uh, services and we can split the HTTP requests between different revisions by using that Envoy service that is included and already running within the container app environment. Applications interacts with external resources like databases, like external services, and for this, reasons they will need to authenticate and to use some secret and sensitive data like a connection string or API token. And for that reason, container apps will support the scenario and will enable you to secure, securely uh, store your sensitive uh, configuration elements within the container apps itself or by using other Azure services like the Azure Key Vault. Getting the application logs is very important for the, the developers to make sure that their application is behaving correctly as they expect. And to get these logs within container apps, we have multiple options. Either you don't want get you want to you don't want to get the container logs, sorry, or either you want to get the logs and save them into a log analytics workspace. And Container Apps supports the CI/CD or the DevOps scenarios where we can use GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps pipelines or any other CI/CD tool in order to deploy our containers into the Container Apps environment. Let's now move to a demo where we'll go to create a simple Container App application within the Azure portal. Let's learn in this video how to create a new container apps environment and applications to deploy a sample container. So from within the Azure portal, I will go to the search section and I look for containers from here. And here I will see the container apps service. I select it. And in this subscription, I don't have any container app yet. So let's go to create our first container app. So here I have the button to create a new container app. I'll go to select that. And this will bring me the template for creating the container apps. So mainly we would have two options. First is selecting the basic configuration where we select the, sub the Azure subscription. Then we uh, select the resource group. And in my case here, I go to create a new resource group. I call it RG ACI demo. Confirm that. Then I'll give a name to my container app. Let's call it just ACA-demo. And then I select the Azure region. In my case, I'll go to select here West Europe, for example. You can choose one of the regions you want. And then we have here configuration for container apps environment. So here from the Azure portal, either we let Azure decide for the name of the container apps for us. So here it will generate a randomly generated name, or we can go to have more control and create a new container apps environment. So remember, first, when we want to create a container app, we should first create the container apps environment that will host the container apps, which are the containers themselves. So within this configuration, we have here the environment details for the environment name. So in my case here, I just call it ACA demo environment. Next uh, setup here is the plan. So we have two different plans for container apps environment. Either we have, we choose the consumption 
model or we choose the consumption and dedicated workload profiles what is the difference actually this new consumption and dedicated uh, workload profiles have more configuration over the nodes that we can run on our uh, AKS cluster remember behind the scenes it's AKS so from here we can choose the node SQ or the node family for those uh, virtual machines so look here when we choose consumption you will see that here we have only basics section when we choose consumption and dedicated we would see here a new section added called profile or workload profiles where we can add here a new workload profile that will be uh, specific for our workloads where here I can go to select that profile size I just showing you here I will not choose it but you can here choose one of these um, specified workload profiles in the future we will have more than uh, these uh, general purpose or memory optimized e-series vms so keep watching on that and then you can choose for the auto scaling instance count from three to five for example that's the basic and that's the standard configuration and you can customize that i'll go back to the basics section and here I go to select consumption for the simplicity of this demo. Next uh, configuration we have here is the zone redundancy. So our uh, container environment will could run on either one availability zone or multiple availability zones for a better resiliency. And this demonstration will just keep going with the disabled section. So we'll use just one single AZ. Next configuration is the monitoring. So from here, we can choose to send the logs from our container apps into log analytics or to Azure monitor, or we can just disable sending the logs. And that's the configuration that I'll choose here for simplicity. Next, then I'll go to the networking section. And within networking section, I can either use my own virtual network or I can use a virtual network that will be managed by the Azure infrastructure itself. It will be managed for me. So if I choose, yes, I want to use my own infra, then here it will ask me to create a new virtual network and then specify and create a new subnet within that uh, virtual network. For simplicity again, I'll just skip with no. And then I'll go to create. And that's going to be the first section for the basics for the container apps where we have specified the con configuration for container apps environment. Now let's move to the second section where we specify what is the container that we want to deploy on top of this container environment. So here we can either choose to run a container from Azure Container Registry ACR or a container from Docker Hub or any other container registry by specifying the credentials if it's a private container or by just specifying the name and the tag of that uh, image. For simplicity, again, I'll go to use a single or a simple quick start image that will be provided by Azure Container Apps team that is called Simple Hello World Container. That container will have a resource allocation of 0.25 uh, CPU and 0.5 gigabytes of memory available for this container. So this container will be available using an ingress resource that is enabled because we have enabled that within the container apps environment. And it will accept traffic from anywhere. It will be exposed through a public API on the internet and it will use the target port number 80. Next configuration is the tags. I will just skip it. And then I'll go, Azure will go here to validate the configuration for the container app and for the container apps environment. And then next I go to click, select create. Now Azure will go to create the container apps environment. This means that behind the scenes will go to create an AKS uh, cluster. Of course, I will not see that AKS cluster. It will be um, fully managed by container apps. And that will take between three to five minutes typically. And then on top of that container environment, it will go to deploy the simple container demo that we'll see later. So let's go back in a few minutes.
Great, now the cluster or the container apps environment were created and the creation was quick. Actually, we can view here the container app environment and the container app container created. I can just go to the resource or I can just go to the resource group to view both resources available right here where we can view the container apps environment and the container app. Let's start first by exploring the container apps environment. So from the overview section, we can view the plan, which is using the consumption plan right here, the static IP that will be uh, used for egress, and then the number of container apps deployed within this environment. Remember here, we can deploy multiple container apps within an environment. That's for the microservices architecture. So each microservice will be deployed in a container or multiple containers that live within the same container apps environment. And because container apps use it CADA and Dapper extensions, they will be installed by default. From here, we can view the versions of these two components. Now from here, if I go to apps, I will see the app that here or the container that is deployed within this container app environment, which is this one, the same resource that is available within the resource group container app. If I select that, then the first thing I will see within the overview section is the application URL. If I click on that, that will open in a new window. And because this is publicly available on the internet, so from here I can see that URL serving my uh, container app sample application on a public URL that is using the location and then dot container apps dot IO. Of course, I can go to customize this domain name. But for now, we are happy that we have our container deployed within container apps in a very simple way.